Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. Moving on to the next concept, dealing with quadratics. We're now gonna talk about a very popular method of dealing with quadratics called completing the square. Now, to do a quick little overview of this, I'm gonna do two examples in this video at the end, and then after this, we'll do a bunch of examples, but just so you see where it fits in the overall picture of quadratic relations, let's do a quick review with what we've covered. So we know quadratic relations, they can take three different formats that we went through. So they can take the standard form, and that's basically ax squared plus bx plus c, like that, where the quadratic is basically expanded. It could also take the vertex form, which is y equals a, uh, bracket x minus h squared plus k. And remember the biggest benefit of this format here is we're able to get the vertex. It's just the h and k value. We had a whole section going through this. And then we also covered the factored form of quadratics, right? Where you could factor it and it's these two factors over here. And the biggest benefit of this is being able to get the x-intercepts or the zeros right away, which is just the m and the n value. And what we've done also is gone through processes where we can transfer from one format to another, go from one to another. So for example, to go to or uh, to go from vertex form to standard form, or to go from factored form to standard form, what do we do? Well, we just expand, right? We multiply all of this out, multiply all of this out, and then we can get to a standard form. We also went through going from standard form to factored form, and that was with the process of factoring, right? different kinds of processes, taking out a greatest common factor, doing decomposition. And what is pretty much left to do now is to go from standard form to vertex form. So we dealt with both of these formats, but we didn't deal with how to go from one to the other, right? And to go from standard form to vertex form, we do it with the method of completing the square. Okay, so that's where completing the square fits in to the overall picture. We're basically going to be taking standard form quadratics and converting them to vertex form quadratics. We went through quadratics dealing with vertex form, but they were already given in vertex form. Here, we're going to actually convert them first to vertex form and then work with that vertex form, right? And the method for converting is with the method of completing the square. So let me go through two examples of how completing the square works. Again, over the next couple of videos, we'll do a bunch of examples. But just to kind of give you a quick intro, I'll do two different examples. And this is just a process you're gonna have to sort of memorize. So first thing you wanna do, this is a standard form quadratic when you're completing the square is you wanna make sure that the x squared, it has a one in front. And sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Here it does already, which is nice. If it doesn't though, what you wanna do is you wanna factor out whatever's in front there from the first two. And in the next example I'll do, there will be something in front, so we'll have to do a preliminary step that we won't have to with this one. But that's the first thing you wanna check. Now, over here, there, all, there already is a one. And so what we do if the A value is one is we take that B value, this value over here, so it's positive four. And here's what you gotta remember. We take this, we divide it by two, and then we square it. So you may wanna actually just write out the general formula over here like that. Right, we're taking this B value over here, dividing it by two, and then we're squaring it. So what would we get if we do this? 
it would be 4 divided by 2. We do the bracket first. It ends up being 2. 2 to the power 2 would give us 4. In this case, it's a coincidence that this 4 and this 4 are the same. That's not always going to happen. You'll see that in the next example. In this case, it is. So that's the first step. And then what you want to do is you want to take this number that you get and you want to write that number after the B value. But you can't just write, for example, plus 4 over here because now it's, we're not working with the same quadratic. It changes the quadratic. So what you want to do is you want to put a minus 4 as well. And then we put the minus 1. Okay, so everything is staying the same. So we got the x squared, we got the 4x, we got the minus 1, and all we added was a plus 4, minus 4. And it's like we're adding nothing because plus 4, minus 4, that just nets out to 0. Right, so those go away and we're still left with x squared plus 4x minus 1. Okay, and the reason why you want to add that in there, add that value over here, is because this process, what it allows you to do is it gives you a perfect square trinomial here. Every time. Okay, so if I have like, uh, let's say x squared plus, uh, let's say, I don't know, let's say 10x over here. And I want to figure out what to add over here in order to make it a perfect square trinomial. What we can do is we could take that b value of 10 divided by 2 and then square it. And that would give us 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 to the power of 2 gives us 25. So if we put a plus 25 over here, that's a perfect square trinomial. Okay, and the reason why we want a perfect square trinomial over here, because remember the vertex form it is in the format a bracket x minus h squared plus k. So x minus h squared. Remember, perfect square trinomial is always going to factor into one factor squared. That's why we want to have a perfect square trinomial here. And so when you factor this over here, at this point, we've done a bunch of factoring. You should be fairly comfortable taking this, factoring it. And that's going to factor into x plus 2 squared, like that. And then we got the minus 4, minus 1 at the end still. We end up with x plus 2 squared minus 4 minus 1 gives us minus 5. And now notice this is in vertex form. Write this a value here, it's like a 1 out here. Now that's not always going to happen. I'm going to show you in the next example how if there's something other than 1 here, when you take it out initially, that's what's going to end up being the a value for the vertex form. But in this case, it's just the 1. But notice, nevertheless, we do have a vertex form quadratic. And if you expand this, x plus 2 times x plus 2 would give you x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then we've got the minus 5. And then these two, what do they net out to? They net out to minus 1, and notice that's the same quadratic that we started with. Okay, so that's basically the process. You want to basically get this as a perfect square trinomial, and the way you do that is you take that b value, divide it by 2, square it, add that value here, but we can't just add a random value because then it changes the quadratic, so we also have to minus the value over here to make it like a 0. And then we ignore those for now, and then we just work with this quadratic that we have. That's always going to be a perfect square trinomial, so it's going to factor into a bracket squared, like it should be in vertex form. And then whatever's left out here, we just net out. Okay, so let's try another example here. Let's actually try a quadratic where the, um, the value the a value of the standard form is not going to be 1. So let's do like 2x squared plus 12x minus 3. Anyway, it's kind of like a weird process. It's just a process you have to sort of memorize. But as you do a bunch of examples like we'll do, it's just going to become second nature. So let's, uh, let's take this standard form quadratic and then convert it to a vertex form. 
So we're going to complete the square on this. Now, first thing to notice, the a value is not 1. Here it's 2. And so as I mentioned, there's going to be a bit of a preliminary step. What you want to do with something like this is you want to factor out that value from the first two terms. So we could take out a 2. We take out the 2 from these two terms. And what are we left with? x squared plus 6x. Close the bracket. And then we have a minus, uh, minus 3. So we only take out a 2 from the first two terms. We don't take out a 2 from this last term. Here we leave that. So it's not like we're taking out a greatest common factor. Right? It's not the same thing. A greatest common factor, remember when we were taking out 1 from a quadratic, we take it out from everything. So if we had like 3x squared plus 6x plus 9, we take out a 3, and we take it out from all the terms. Right? So this and this are not the same thing. Right? We're only taking out this value from the first two. So if we apply this method, over here, we end up with that, right? So that's the first thing. Again, just something you got to kind of remember. And then the next thing is, remember that formula, the b over 2 squared? We don't apply that formula on this original b value we apply it on this new b value because we have to work with this quadratic in this bracket. Remember, this bracket is going to have to somehow factor as a perfect square trinomial in order to get it uh, to that vertex form. Okay, so the quadratic that we're going to end up working with is this x squared plus 6x plus whatever is going to be there. Okay, and Again, we have to take out the 2 first, and then we end up with this, and then we apply that formula on this 6, not on this 12. If this was just x squared, like that, then it's already in this format where the a value is 1, right? Here for this quadratic in this bracket, not the overall quadratic, just in the bracket, the a value is 1. Here the a value is 1, so we don't have to do any steps of taking something out in order to make that a value 1. We can just... Um, go with the process from here. So we would take the 12 divided by 2, that would give us 6, square it, plus 36, minus 36, right? But because there is a 2 in front, we had to take it out first from the first two terms in order to get this x squared by itself. And then when we apply the formula, we apply it on the 6. So we would go 6 divided by 2, and then square it. 6 divided by 2 is 3. When we square it, that would give us 9. And now what we do with that 9 is we add it inside the bracket, plus 9 right there. But remember, we can't just add a random 9 because it's not part of the original quadratic, so we also have to subtract a 9. And that happens within the bracket. So it's like we're adding 0 over here. We're not changing anything, right? This is the same as this because this is just 0, um, but we're just adding more stuff. Okay, so now what we want to do is this becomes a perfect square trinomial, this quadratic over here, this x squared plus 6x plus 9. That's going to factor into x plus 3 squared. But what's the problem? Well, we have this minus 9 over here in the bracket as well. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of this minus 9. But when we take out the minus 9, you can't just take something out of this bracket because there's a 2 in front. So we actually have to multiply this minus 9 by the 2, by this value that's in front. Okay, so it ends up being 2 bracket x squared plus 6x plus 9. Right, we leave that quadratic as is. We took this minus 9 out, but because we're taking it out of the bracket, we have to multiply it by 2. And then we have the minus 3 as well at the end there. And so what's the next line? We end up with x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then we got minus 18 minus 3, like that. Okay, I know it's, uh, it seems like a lot over here to kind of take in if this is the first time you're running into this method. But as I mentioned, as we do more examples, which we will, it's just going to become second nature. But 
Again, if there's something in front here, the process is a little more complex. Got to factor it. Then you got to take the b divided by 2 squared, this b value, add that, subtract that value, and then you got to take that, this value out of the bracket, but you got to remember to multiply it by 2. It's a common mistake of students forgetting to multiply it by 2. Sometimes they'll just put a minus 9 over here. Okay, but you got to multiply it by 2, so it becomes a negative 18. And so from here, what you end up with is 2 bracket. This is a perfect square trinomial. When you factor it, it ends up being x plus 3 squared. And then minus 18 minus 3 gives us minus 21. And that is the final answer. That is this quadratic in vertex form. Right, so this is a standard form quadratic. This is the exact same quadratic, but in, uh, in vertex form. Look how nice it is. We can get the vertex right away. Negative 3 and uh, negative 21. Right, it's always the opposite sign, remember, the vertex form. And then, so we got the h value, and then we have the k value, like that. Right, versus here, couldn't really get the vertex right away. So once we complete the square, we get in that nice vertex form where we can get some characteristics that we couldn't with the standard form. And kind of like factoring, remember that with factoring, you were able to check your answer by taking that factored form, expanding it, making sure you end up with that same standard form quadratic that you initially started with. Well, same thing with this, because remember to go from vertex form to standard form is just expanding as well. Right? It's a bit of a different process because it's a different format over here, but nevertheless, you still expand it. And so what happens if we expand this? We'll have x plus 3 times x plus 3. And we've got the minus 21. So we've got to work with multiplication first, bed mass, and then subtraction. So we have 2, x plus 3 times x plus 3 gives us x squared plus 3x plus 3x would give us 6x plus 9 minus 21. Distribute the 2. 2x squared plus 12x plus 18 minus 21, and then these are like terms. We end up with minus 3. And notice, exact same quadratic that we started with. Right? So it's a fairly cool process going from standard form, completing the square, changing it to vertex form. As I mentioned, going to do a bunch of examples of that in the next few videos.